that sees the invisible expects the incredible receives the impossible faith that can conquer Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Good morning, and welcome to Smith Chapel. We greet you all in the master's name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, thanking him that you thought it not robbery to fellowship with us on today. Out of all the churches you could have chosen, you chose Smith Chapel. And for that, we are truly grateful. It is our prayer that something said here today will bless you, that you might be able to bless somebody else. Expects the incredible, receives the impossible faith that can conquer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Won't you prepare your hearts and bow your heads as we go before the throne of grace. Most gracious and kind, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you this morning just thanking you. Thanking you, Lord, for blessing us to see another day. Thanking you, Lord, for an opportunity to hear a word from you. We thank you, Lord, just for being God and being God all by yourself. We welcome your sweet Holy Spirit in this place, Lord, that your will will be done, that you will have your way. Hallelujah. Because we know, Heavenly Father, where you are, there is victory. Hallelujah. There is peace. There is love. There is joy. So we welcome you all this morning to have your way. For we need a blessing, Lord. Hallelujah. And we're thanking you right now for what you are about to do. Hallelujah. Bless our comings and bless our goings. Hallelujah. We thank you. We love you and we adore you. It is in Jesus' name that we pray this prayer together and we say amen and praise God. God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has smiled on me. He's been good. To me, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. God has smiled on me, He has set me free. God has smiled on me he's been good 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 God's been real good. Set food on my table. God's been real good. All of my life. God's been real good. All of my life. God's been real good. God's been real good. Say, God's been real good. He's been good. He's been good. He's been good to me. 
good morning, Smith Chapel. It is that time of service that each and every one of us can participate. It is offering time. You all, this is the time in which we can give back unto God and just show God just how appreciative we are of all that he has done for us. You know, there are several ways that you can give here at Smith Chapel. You'll notice as it comes across your screen, you can give via PayPal, Givelify. You can even point your phone towards that QR code, and it's going to take you directly to Givelify, making it really easy for you. Or you can mail your offering into the church. Whatever you would like to do, we are trying to make it easy for you to give and to give back unto God. So as you're preparing your offering, I'm going to raise up my offering envelope to the heavenlies as I say this prayer, because we say a special prayer here at Smith Chapel. And it goes something like this. Dear Lord, help me to grasp that all the money that I think I have, it is not mine, Lord, but it is yours. It is yours because I would not have it if you did not provide it. Dear Lord, help me to grasp that all the money that the church has, it's not the church's, but it is yours. So Lord, thank you for giving me a grateful and a thankful and a cheerful heart on this morning. As we give back to you, Lord, we know that you are going to press it together, run it over, shake it, do all those wonderful things and bless us, Lord, more abundantly than we can ever even imagine. And let the church say, Amen. Corby? Give and I'll give it back to you. The 2022 version. Give and I'll give it back to you. <laughs> ah. I press it down. Shake it together, running over. Yeah. Back in good measure, yeah, I'll give it back to you. Amen. I'll give it back to you. 2022. And 22. <laughs> I'll give it back to you. There will be mountains that I will have to climb and there will be battles that I will have to fight but victory or defeat it's up to me to decide but how can I expect to win if I never try, I just can't give up now. Come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me never said there would be trials never said I would and fall never said that everything would go the way I want it to go but when my back is against the wall and I feel a hope is gone I'll just lift my head up to the sky and say help me to be strong I just can't give up Come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy. I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. No, you didn't bring me out here to leave me lonely even when I can't see clearly I know that you are with me so I can't I can't give up no 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 I've come too far from where I from where I used to 
That the road that I take will be easy. I don't believe you brought me this far to leave me. I don't feel no waste time. I've come too far, y'all. I've come too far. I've come too far, oh Lord. See, nobody told me that my path that I'm going to take is easy. I know he didn't bring me this far just to leave me, oh Lord. I just can't give up now. Come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy. I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. Oh, I don't believe. He's brought me this far to leave me. Oh, I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me. I don't believe he's brought me this far to leave me hallelujah 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 I just can't give up now no I've come too far from where I started from nobody told me that the road would be easy and I don't believe my God brought me this far just to leave me Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Hallelujah. For he's worthy, church. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. And there is a word from the Lord. Won't you join me in our scripture reading? I'm going to be reading for our hearing from the second chapter of Joshua. Verses 1 through 14. And then I'm going to go over to Hebrew. The 11th chapter. And read verse 31. So won't you follow along with me. Reading from the New International Version. And this is how it begins. Joshua 2. Second chapter of Joshua. Starting at verse 1. Then Joshua said. Son of Nun secretly sent two spies to Shittim. Go look over the land he said especially Jericho. So they went and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab and they stayed there. The king of Jericho was told, look, some of the Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent a message to Rahab, bring out the men who came to you and entered your house because they have come to spy out the whole land. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. She said, yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they had come from. At dusk, when it was time to close the city gate, they left. I don't know which way they went. Go after them quickly. You may catch up with them. But she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them under the stalks of flax she had laid out on the floor. So the men sent out to set out to pursue of the spies on the road and led to the fords of the Jordan. And as soon as the pursuers had gone out, the gate was shut. Before the spies laid down for the night, she went up on the roof and said to them, 
I know that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. Have you heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt and what you did to Shion and Og, the two kings of the Amorites east of the Jordan who you completely destroyed? When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear and everyone's courage fell because of you. For the Lord your God is God in the heaven above and on the earth below. Now then, please swear to me my, by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and that you will save them from death. Our lives for your lives. The men assured her, if you don't tell what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us the land. Hebrews eleven thirty one, By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were dishonest. This is the word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. The Lord will have me speak to you this morning on the subject, courageous faith. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you right now. Yes, Lord. We cannot give up now because, Lord, we come too far from where we started. And we know, Lord, that the road is not going to be easy. But then again, you didn't bring us this far just to leave us. So we come right now, Lord, ready to hear a word from on high. Lord, and it is our prayer that we are not only hearers of your word, but do us also. Lord, have your way in this worship experience. Hallelujah. It is my prayer, Lord. Hallelujah. That you will bless me. That you will rise up inside of me and demonstrate your power. And then, Lord, we will give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. And the children of the Most High God say together, Amen and praise God. Courageous faith. Still honoring Women's History Month. I would like to share with you a story about a woman who is listed in the 11th chapter of the book of Hebrews as one of the heroes of faith. I mean, this woman had courageous faith. In fact, she is one of the only two women mentioned by name in the hall of faith. In the 11th chapter of Hebrews, she is known as the prostitute, the prostitute. The prostitute Rahab. In the second chapter in the book of Joshua, we find more information about Rahab. She lives in the city of Jericho in a house built on the outer wall that surrounded the city for protection. From her window that overlooks the wall, she could see travelers coming into the city. By the end, but, but they even, before they even entered the gates, Okay, let me see that. Now, see, from her window, she could see travelers coming into the city. And before they even entered the gate, if she eyed a handsome young man, if she eyed somebody good looking about to enter the city, and if she wanted to, you know, she could capture his attention by just leaning out her window and calling down to him. Being a prostitute, Rahab could not have asked for a better place to live than right there on the outer wall of the city. Yes, yeah, she had it going on. She was a woman who would sell her body for the pleasure of men. When men who had traveled from great distances came to her wall of the city, all she had to do was let down, let them know that she was available. And this is how she did it, y'all. She prettied herself up. She leaned out her window and then she called down to them. Yes. Now, 
Let's think about that thing for a minute. How many hearts do you think Rahab had broken? How many homes do you think she destroyed? How many families had she torn apart and marriages she ruined? To think, she did it all for the love of money. Hmm. It wasn't that she was homeless or living on the streets that forced her to this lifestyle. It wasn't that she had no one to help her or to give her encouragement and support. The Bible tells us that her mother and her father, her brothers and her sisters, they live right there in the same city. And yet she traded her body for money. Although the Bible, wherever her name is mentioned, all throughout the Bible, right next to it, you will find the words, the prostitute. Anytime you saw her name in the Bible, the word, the prostitute, will be there. Rahab, the prostitute. That reputation is how she will forever be remembered. She will be forever remembered for what she once was and probably not what she became. Yet, you see, as a result of her courageous faith, one day her whole life changed. She eventually, she met a man who loved her more for who she was than for what she did. This man just so happened to be a prince. In time, they married, had a child, and they named him Boaz. And like all love stories, as far as we know, they lived happily ever after. But let's get back to the beginning of this story. Back to the time where Rahab first comes into the picture doing her time of holiday. Yes. In our text, we see that one night Rahab met two men who had come from a distant land to her city to spy out the place. These two men belonged to a large group of people who were the grown children of former slaves. They had just come from wandering in the desert for 40 years because their fathers had refused to believe in the God that had freed them from slavery. And while they rested, the rest of the people were waiting on the other side of the river. They were waiting, ready to come in and conquer this land which had been promised to him for over 400 years. Yes, these two men, they find themselves in the company of a lady of the night named Rahab. Rahab's story is really quite unique, not simply because she was a prostitute, but because she was a prostitute with courageous faith. Yeah, you see, her faith expressed her belief in God more than the people who claim to have belonged to him. Looking back on our text, we see in verse 9, where Rahab says to the two spies, she says, I know that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you has fallen on us so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. She and her people were frightened. They were frightened because of some events that had transpired some 40 years earlier. Specifically, the crossing of the Red Sea and the defeat of the king Sihon and Og. Now, Rahab didn't experience any of these events directly. She didn't even see them with her own eyes. Personally, she knew nothing, nothing about God. And she had no idea of any of his teachings, nor does she know what is required for her to be forgiven of her sins. All she had to go by was what she heard about this awesome God. And that was all she needed. It was all she needed to give her enough courage to put her life on the line. And so Rahab gets the two men who had come to spy out the land. She gets them to make a promise to her. Promise that they would spare her life and her family in exchange for keeping their presence and their plan a secret. Now the men agreed under two conditions. First, they said that she must keep a red cord hanging out of the window of her city wall. And then secondly, she must have her father and her mother, 
her sisters and brothers and all of their family in her house when they come back to take over the land. Now, if any of them are out in the open when the battle starts, the deal is off and their blood will be upon their own heads. Hmm. Now, can you imagine the difficulty Rahab must have had convincing her family to come and live in her home? For all we know, they could have been respectable citizens of that city and to have to stay in a house that is known as a place of passion? Oh my God, what would the neighbors think? Hmm. And for those of you who have tried over and over again to share your faith with your family and friends, you know firsthand how difficult that can be at times. Some of you have been trying for years to get that husband, that wife, that son, that daughter, that mother, that father, that brother, and that sister. You've been trying to get them to join the church. Hmm. And in some cases, you still have not been successful. But Rahab stands as an example. She stands as an example that it can be done. So don't give up. Hallelujah. The spies used the red cord hanging out from Rahab's window to escape into the night. Now we see in verse 16 where Rahab gave them instructions. She said, go to the hills so the pursuers will not find you. Hide yourself there three days until they return and then go on your way. But notice, the spies did not give Rahab a deadline. They didn't tell her when the battle would begin or when they would return. All they gave her was their word. And that was just enough for her. She didn't have to have all the details. She believed in the God that they served. And because of that, God listed Rahab as one of the great women of faith. Now, Hebrews 11.31 says, By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. Hmm. Not only is she mentioned in the hall of faith, but also in the book of James. Rahab's faith is compared to that of Abraham, whom the Bible calls the father of the faithful. James 2, 23 through 25, it says, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. He was even called the friend of God. So you see, as we are shown to be right with God by what we do, not by faith alone. Rahab, the prostitute, is another example. She was shown to be right with God by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road. And then Hebrews eleven thirty nine, 39, the Bible tells us that she was commended for her faith. And in this passage of James that we just read, it tells us that she was considered just as righteous as Abraham was for the for. Three things that she did. Hmm. The three things she did. She hid the spies. And then for sending them off to a different direction. And then she did this, y'all, by waiting on the Lord. Now, what does it mean when it says that she sent them off in a different direction? Remember the men of the city? Y'all remember them? Hmm. They came to her with a command from the king to give up the spies who they knew had come to her home. Did she tell them the truth as to where their whereabouts? No. In fact, she lied. She sent them off in a different direction. And it was that lie and her actions that accomplished that accomplished accompanied it that in God's eyes put her right up there with the faithful and the righteous. <laughs> After leaving Rahab's home, the spies hid in the hills for three days, just like she suggested. Then they went back to camp for three days before crossing the Jordan River on the dry ground, just as their fathers did when they passed through the Red Sea. Once they crossed the Jordan River, they rested three more days. And then they began erecting the pillar of the 12 stones. That was mentioned 
uh, it, it was a memorial for their children to remind them of the great deeds that God had done for them. Y'all remember that? Those, those, those stones, those rocks, y'all remember that? We find it in the sixth chapter of Joshua, verses three and five, where the Lord gives Joshua instructions on how to defeat the king of Jericho in his army. The Lord says, march around the city once with an, with an armed man. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram horns in front of the ark. On the seventh day, mark around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear them, sound a loud blast on the trumpet. Have the whole army give a loud shout. Then the wall will collapse and the army will go up. Everyone straight in. Hallelujah. By faith. Joshua found the Lord's instructions, followed the Lord's instructions, and the soldiers began to march around the city. Now, I can just imagine, y'all, how excited Rahab must have been on that first day when she saw the troops marching around the, si uh, the city. Now, surely she must have thought that all the efforts that she took in getting her family to be placed in a, in, a, in a place of shame, it must have now made sense to them. Hallelujah. After they saw everything that was going on, they, they had to begin to understand. But then, can you imagine her disappointment when all they did that day was march around the city in silence and then they left? Hmm. As she sees this happening from her window, she has only three things to rely on. Hallelujah. The promise of the spies that they would spare her life and that of her family. The red cord that hung from the window, which was not only a reminder of their escape, but also a promise of their return. And then third, her faith as she waited on the Lord. Now, keep in mind, this red cord hanging from the city was visible to all. So how many times do you think her family asked her what it meant? And then how many times do you think she had to bite her tongue to keep from telling them what was about to happen? Because remember, if she told the deal would be off. But we would, but what would they know she told? Hmm. Would they even know the spies? That Rahab told. No. <laughs> but she must have believed that the God of heaven above and the earth below would know. The God that knows all, sees all, and hears all would know. Can you imagine what her family members must have said to her each day as the Israelites marched around the city and then left in silence? Hmm. Well, I imagine them saying, really, Rahab, you a prostitute. Duh, don't you know that men always tell prostitutes that they're coming back, but they never do? Huh? They said what they say, what you want them to hear to keep you from talking and telling what they were about to do. So they said what they wanted you to hear. They probably have wives and children of their own and they're not going to come back and save you. Hmm. Makes you wonder. Wonder what Rahab had been thinking. What was she thinking while her family was talking negative talk like that? While she was waiting for the men to return. What was she thinking? Was her faith wavering? Did she begin to have doubt? Did she begin to question her actions? How did she explain her actions to her family okay so crossing the Jordan River on dry land was impressive hmm. but the piling up of a bunch of rocks what's that all about and then to see to see them doing more of marching around and marching around the city without even a moan hallelujah from any of them then the spies had never, ever given Rahab a deadline. 
She didn't have any idea when they was going to return. Hmm. Rahab took a big risk, y'all. And she kept up her part of the deal. By hanging the red cord out of her window for everyone to see and question. She even put the credibility of her family on the line by getting them to live with her. Just because she was a prostitute doesn't mean that her family condoned what she did. Amen. Now, can you see why God would have used her for an example of faith for all those who came after her? People who tend to let who, who tend to let their past dictate their future to make them feel worthy, unworthy of God's love and their faithfulness. Hallelujah. What a great example to help encourage our faith. Yes, Rahab's faith was great, greater than those who had witnessed with their own eyes the crossing of the Red Sea. Here was a woman who had risked everything she had to be on God's side. So what's the moral to this story? What is God trying to tell us? What strategic knowledge has the two spies come to Jericho to obtain? Did they need to know how thick the walls were? I don't think so. Because they didn't even know themselves that God was intending to knock the walls down. Did they go in order to determine what kind of weapons they would need to defeat the people? I don't think so. None of these things were factors in conquering the city. God wasn't going to need any of that stuff in order to bring down the walls of Jericho. But you know what? I believe that the spies were sent to Jericho for one purpose. And one purpose only. I believe they were sent to find Rahab to assure her of her salvation and to mark her home so that she will be protected when fighting started. I believe that God delayed the taking of the land of his, for his people in order to rescue one solitary woman. A woman who he knew had the heart to believe him. Hallelujah. And he knew that she believed in him in spite of the fact that she had never seen one single miracle of his. And you know, the just shall live by faith and not by sight. And God gave her the conviction needed to persuade others to also believe in him. Hallelujah. Of all the places to be on the seventh day when the Israel, Israelite army marched around the city for the last time. Of all the places to be, the most dangerous place was to be on the wall. Why? Because that wall was about to come crashing down. And yet, when the troops of Israel marched around the city six times, blew their horns and shouted on the seventh time around, the home of Rahab did not come crashing down. The part of the wall, that part remained standing. She and all who was in her house were saved. Yes, Rahab's life was spared because God had bigger and greater plans for her. Amen. You see, Rahab married Solomon, Salmon, who we believe he had been one of the two spies that she hid. From that marriage, Boaz was born. Boaz married Ruth. Y'all know Ruth. Yeah, the woman who stepped out on faith. The mother of Obed, who is the father of Jesse. Jesse, Rahab's grandson, was the father of David. The king through whose line Jesus was born. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, God had great plans for Rahab. And like Rahab, we too live on the basis of promises. Promises made by a man who came out of the sinful world and left, who came to our sinful world and then left assuring us that he was coming back again. Hallelujah. And like the spies of Rahab's story, this man didn't give us a specific timetable for when he was coming back either. Why did he come? It wasn't just to look around. 
It wasn't just because he needed to know if what he was going to be able to, to accomplish that he would be able to do it. He came for you and for you and for you and you. Yes, he came. Hallelujah. That we might have life and have it more abundantly. And even if you were the only person on this planet who believed in him, he still would have come just for you because he's coming back church hallelujah he's coming back for all of us hallelujah because he knows that we are just as sinful as any prostitute and at all there is there is none perfect none perfect but God and to him one sin is as evil as the next they all separate us from the father any sin we commit separates us from the father but on many occasions one may have thought that God's actions weren't very productive which resulted in the question why why does he do things like pile up rocks in our lives why doesn't he just remove the heavy burdens that we must bear why does he sometimes seem as if he's just moving in circles in our lives? Why has he allowed this pandemic, hallelujah, to last so long? Why? 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 Where is he? Where is his mighty hand? Does he even notice us? These are the questions that we sometimes ask ourselves. And we too have been given the responsibility to try with all of our power to persuade our families to stay in the only safe place, which is within his kingdom. Somehow we must convince our loved ones that his promise is worth risking everything for. Hallelujah. He left us with the Holy Spirit as a promise that he was going to return again. And the scarlet cord of our lives must be the reality of the blood of Jesus Christ that streams down from the cross. It is our only hope, y'all, for salvation. Hallelujah. And you know what? It's going to take some courageous faith. Hallelujah. But we must be brave enough to display it, to talk about it, and to live by it. Hallelujah. Because he's coming back. And it is true that we don't know the hour. We don't know the day. But we do know that he's coming back. So in order to have the strength that we need to wait on his return, like Rahab, we got to have courageous faith. Hallelujah. The kind of faith that we don't worry about what other folks think. Hallelujah. The kind of faith that will cause us to ris risk everything that we have in order to be pleasing in God's sight. I'm talking about courageous faith. The kind of faith that sees the invisible, expects the incredible, receives the impossible faith. Hallelujah! That can conquer anything. Yes, I'm talking about courageous faith. The kind of faith that can reach, hallelujah, the unreachable fight, the unbeatable move, the unmovable, yes, faith that can conquer anything. I'm talking about courageous faith. Are there any courageous people out here today? Anybody who's ready, hallelujah, to stand on God's word and stand on his promises and trust and believe that he will make a way? He will make a way out of what appears to be no way. Hallelujah. All you got to do is believe him. All you got to do is step out on faith. Hallelujah. And do it courageously like Rahab did it. Believe in him that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Believe in that you can do all things through Christ who strengthened you. Believe in that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's what it takes, y'all. It takes courageous faith. 
Are there any courageous people in the house? If there is, I invite you right now to give them the highest praise. Let's say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to his name. We thank God this morning. We thank God for courageous faith. Let us pray. Hallelujah. 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 Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the word that has gone forth. Lord, we thank you for reminding us, hallelujah, that with courageous faith, we can conquer anything. Hallelujah. Reminding us, hallelujah, that we can do all things through you, Christ Jesus, who strengthen us. Reminding us that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So Lord, we come before you right now asking you, Lord, to please increase our faith. Give us enough faith when we cannot see it. We can believe it. Hallelujah. It is our prayer, Lord, that you will open up our eyes not to see the world, not to see the world more clearly, but to see you. Hallelujah. Often our eyes Open them, Lord. Open them so that we can see you working around us and in us, knowing that nothing happens by accident. Knowing that you orchestrate every day of our lives, allowing us to see your hand, Lord. And every day and everything that we do, everyday life as well as extraordinary times, allow us to see your hand. Help us, Lord. Help us to trust in what we cannot see and believe in the invisible presence of you. Hallelujah, Lord. It is in your son Jesus' name that we pray this prayer on this morning. And we say, amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Now there just might be somebody Somebody here today, we talked about stepping out faith last week. Now we're talking about having courageous faith. Hallelujah. Because it takes faith, hallelujah, to please God. His word says without faith, we can't please him. It takes faith to believe in something we cannot see and know that it's there. So I invite you today, if there's anybody out there, Hallelujah. Perhaps you're looking for a church home. Hallelujah. Perhaps you want to come back home. We welcome you with open arms because we believe you may find a bigger church, but you will not find a more lovable church because here at Smith Chapel, we believe our lives are not about us, but about God getting the glory from using us. So we invite you to come and be a part of our family. And if you haven't prayed that prayer of salvation, the prayer that gives you the assurance that you need, hallelujah, that you will be blessed with the gift of everlasting life. If you haven't prayed that prayer, then I want you to use my words, but use your heart. Hallelujah. And let us pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, I come before you today seeking your forgiveness for my sins. Lord, please forgive me for my wrong. I come confessing with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believing in my heart that you rose him from the dead. And because I confess, because I believe, because I surrender to you, I thank God I am saved. Praise be to God, I am saved. Amen. Now, if there's anyone out there who prayed that prayer, hallelujah, anyone who has a desire to come back home, or be a part of the Smith Fab Chapel family. Please let us know who you are. We would love to have you. Because Smith Chapel is the place to be. Hallelujah. You can let us know who you are by calling us at 313-561-2837. And if you're in the need of prayer. Hallelujah. You can email us at prayer at smithchapelamechurch.org. Reach out to us. So we can reach back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Again, we pray that something said here today has blessed you. 
And if you choose to be a blessing in your giving, we have several giving options. We have PayPal, GiveLafly. If you put your phone over the QR code, it'll take you directly to GiveLafly. You can mail in your donation, however you see fit to bless us. We thank God for you. Hallelujah. And we have a lot going on. I don't know if you guys heard about the big toy giveaway. And we were asking for donations for bikes. If God has placed it on your heart to give a donation for a bike, we would love for you to bless us. Just annotate on your giving that that's what it's for. We thank you for helping us to be a blessing in this community. God's word say, I will bless them that bless thee. And after all, all the money that we have is not ours. It belongs to God. <laughs> and all the money that the church have, that money that you give to us, it's not the church's. It belongs to God. And our plan is to do with it what God would have us to do. Hallelujah. So we thank you now for your giving. Good afternoon, Smith Chapel. Time for your announcements for this Sunday. You know what? Immediately following service, please join us on Zoom so you can have time of fellowship with Pastor Twyla. Don't you miss that? We're getting back there real soon, but you can spend some time on Zoom immediately following. You may be on Facebook right now. You may even be on YouTube, but come on over on Zoom. You'll see the information as it pops up on your screen and join us for fellowship. We won't be long. We just have a lot of good time with each other. You all, in our announcements for this week, there are a lot of things going on as we are preparing very quickly and preparing just so hard to come back into this sanctuary. We are going to all full-blown be back in here on Palm Sunday, but I just wanted to let you know that um, as we're preparing for that, um, we've got this big bike and toy drive and giveaway that we're doing for Resurrection Weekend. And with that being said, we need volunteers to come to the church on I think that's Thursday, the 31st of March, from 5 to 8 p.m., because they're packing up toys and getting the toys ready for the giveaway. Then there are books that are going to be needed, because we're not going to just give, you know, we're not just going to give kids toys without giving children books also. So we got books that we are asking you to donate. If you would like to do that, please see Sister Michelle. I think her deadline for the book donation is on April the 3rd. Now, I will tell you, this week, as we're going into this week, Tuesdays, you know what happens at Smith Chapel. 7 a.m. power prayer. We start our day with power. 6.30 p.m. Bible study. This Wednesday, mark your calendars, this Wednesday is the Wednesday that Pastor Twyla will be preaching the Twi uh, Linton service with our Linton Alliance. And you can find us on at 7 p.m. on Wednesday evening on Facebook, on Zoom, and on YouTube. So come on and just have a good old midweek service time and worship with us on Wednesday evening. Then on Thursday evening, the 17th, uh, we're calling on all choir members to come on out at 7 p.m. Now I tell you what, we're going to do our choir in the, in the future, COVID choir safe. That's Myra's term, COVID choir safe. So there's going to be probably about four or five people at the most singing each Sunday, but you got to rehearse. You got to come together. So this Thursday at 7 p.m. kicks off the choir rehearsal. Corby's going to be here. Amber's going to be here. I think Dr. Weaver's going to be here. I'll oh, come on and get that good instruction so we can be in order and ready. Now I, oh, <laughs> one last announcement. I think someone said this to us the other day. Because choir rehearsal is taking place on the 17th, we are rescheduling the official board meeting that was originally scheduled for the 17th. I Thank you for everyone that has submitted your reports, but our official board meeting is on the 21st. Reports have been in, gone to the pastor. 21st is on uh, Monday at 6.30 p.m. Come on Zoom, official board members. I think that's all the announcements that I may have for this week. I thank you for joining us. I love y'all. See you soon. See you on Zoom after service. See you soon. And now I want to leave you with these words. Like Rahab. We must have courageous faith, the kind of faith that will help us to deal with life challenges. And we must be brave enough, church, brave enough to display it, to talk about it, and to live by it. Faith that can conquer anything. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may his sweet communion rest, rule, and abide now 
henceforth and forever. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heaven, the host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. God has spoken. Let the church say, Amen. God has spoken, so let the church say, 